Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about books that I don't really talk about too much on this channel, if ever on this channel, but that I absolutely love and have been some of my favorite reads. Now these books are gonna be across all genres, but you guys know that I have particular um, leaning towards romance. So a lot of these books are romance. So if it, that's not your cup of tea, then a lot of these reads are not going to interest you, but I do have some other books in here as well. So without further ado, <laughs> sorry, he's biting my feet. So I have to hold him right now. Hope he's not too distracting. So without further ado, let's begin. The first book I want to talk about is called Cake by Jay Bankst Bankston. Bankston. This is a book I discovered a few years ago. I want to say two to three years ago and I actually discovered it on my Amazon Kindle like Unlimited. So I talk about that a lot here on this channel but if you're unaware Kindle Unlimited is a program where for like $9.99 a month you have unlimited access to all of these Kindle books. So I believe that Jay Bankston is an independent published author correct me if I'm mistaken but I do read a lot of independently published authors and also just independent publishing houses so or at least not mainstream publishing houses so I was really drawn to this novel and it seemed sort of fluffy and lighthearted until I started reading it and it was actually really deep this is not your normal rock star romance it does have our main characters are Jake McAllister and Casey Casey Caldwell and their love story is very unique I don't know the way that it was written it's funny because I read the novel twice and then I listened to the audiobook last year and fell in love with the book all over again the audiobook is excellent so for those of you that enjoy audiobooks I recommend this one it was read very well it was very entertaining but like I said, it is not your typical rock star romance. It does have a lot of deeper undertones, especially because Jake McAllister is a rock star, but he's also a very talented musician and he has a very dark past because he survived a kidnapping as a kid. So things kind of get dark when it comes to Jake's past. And then Casey Caldwell is just this normal college student. And the way, the way they meet is so interesting. They basically get paired up at a wedding, at a mutual friend's wedding she's the groomsman to her bridesmaid so that's how they get paired up and obviously she knows that he's famous and she's able to keep her composure while she's with him and she makes him laugh I don't know it just reminds me of those old-school romantic comedies but also had a deeper underlying storyline to it that made it not just fluffy and made it memorable and then Jay Bengston is an incredible storyteller and a great writer I just I recommend it if you like romances this is going to be more towards the new adult side um it's not a clean romance so if you don't like you know more raunchier sexier scenes then you're not going to enjoy this but i would say that even for those who don't typically read romance you will enjoy this because it does have those laugh out loud funny moments those more lighthearted more moments i remember reading it and thinking it was really funny and actually laughed out loud at quite a few parts so book number one and i will have it up here Book number two is a book I read back in 2015, and I think I just read it at the perfect time in my life. I actually want to reread it again and see if it has the same impact on me, but it is a young adult novel, and it is actually book five in a series, and it began with a pretty fairly popular young adult novel called Catching Jordan by Miranda Canali is the name of the author, and Catching Jordan, Jordan is book one in the series, but I read Catching Jordan, and then I skipped all the way to this Book that I'll be talking about book five and it is called breathe Annie breathe and I just want to read you guys my Goodreads review of this because I feel like nothing will capture how I felt about this novel at the time that I read it better than the good read Goodreads review that I wrote at that time okay 4.5 stars this was such a wonderful story I really enjoyed this one and recommend it to everyone the way Miranda Canali deals with the aftermath of death and how she skillfully portrays Annie dealing with her grief while learning to feel and live again is truly beautiful and resonated with me on a deep level. This novel was poignant, fresh, funny, sweet, brave, and just lovely. Much like our main protagonist, Annie, who I absolutely adored. 
She was so admirable and I'd definitely be friends with her in real life, lol. Annie wasn't perfect, but damn, I was rooting for her, and she's a wonderful character. I also enjoyed all of the other characters as well as the inclusion of running, more specifically, long distance running in this novel. I learned so much. I had no idea learning to run long distances was so harrowing and grueling. It furthered my admiration for Annie and made me cheer her on even more. I loved the romance. It was well done and so believable and heartfelt. Nothing about it felt rushed, heavy-handed, or thrown together. Do you want to leave me? He wants to leave me. Okay, bye-bye. I hope to see these characters again in a future Canali novel, just to make sure they're still living happily ever after. I also really enjoyed the way sex was handled in this novel. It was realistic, integral to the telling of the story and development of the plot, and never felt overdone, inappropriate, or unnecessary. What a feat in young adult. Ultimately, this novel takes you on a journey of Annie's reawakening, her return to the land of the living, so to speak, and it felt like an honor to be included in her healing process. It was also awesome for those of us who read and loved Catching Jordan to see some of our favorite characters once again, now adults and having careers they love. This was one of my favorite things about this read, having this peek into their lives years after the, after the events of Catching Jordan. That was awesome. This book is book five in the series that began with Catching Jordan, but you don't have to read the previous four books to read this one, although I'm sure that would enhance the reading experience. Blah, 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 blah. All in all, this novel is simply just beautiful. It's beautifully written and it touched me. Highly recommend. So there you go. Definitely go check it out. Book number three is Sincerely Carter by Whitney G. And this is another book that I think I read. Sorry, I'm looking at the Goodreads review of it so I can read that as well because that's just more succinct, succinct. I can't talk, it's too late. That's more succinct at this point. August 7th, 2016 is when I wrote this review. My review, I gave it four stars. This was fantastic. What a perfect way to begin the month of May. I stayed up all night, April 30th, and finished this in one sitting, in the early hours of the morning on May 1st. This is the perfect best friends to lovers story. I had a smile on my face the entire time I was reading this. Whitney Garcia Williams' writing is so addictive. She is excellent at fleshing out characters and making them so lovable and believable. Also, her dialogue is excellent. The witty conversations, sexual tension, back and forth, and just the bond that Carter and Arizona share is so beautiful, real, and wonderful to watch blossom into a true and deep romantic love. I can't say enough about how much I enjoyed this new adult romance. Their dynamic reminded me so much of the Katherine Hepburn and Tr Spencer Tracy slash Cary Grant movies I loved to watch growing up. So entertaining and brilliant. Just the way the two of them related to each other was perfection. It wasn't a perfect book by any means, but the characters, dialogue, and relationships within the novel more than made up for any plot holes or weak areas within the storytelling. This is a fun and delightful read, but not for the faint of heart. If you're not into sex in books, then definitely skip out on this one. Um, Jennifer L. Armentrout, Abby Glines, Samantha Young, J. Ed Redmersky, Helena Hunting, or other similar fantastic new adult authors Oh, if you love those authors, you will love this one. Yes, I remember really enjoying Simply Carter. I did read it at one sitting. I loved it. I laughed out loud. It really did remind me of those classic romantic comedies. And I don't know about you guys, or if you've ever seen those films with Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn or Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn. Those are some of my favorite classic movies. And I had so much fun like watching them as a kid. And to this day, I still enjoy watching them. And this book definitely gave me those vibes with the banter and the back and forth and the kind of the comical scenarios. And for those that don't know, Friends to Lovers Romance is my absolutely 100% favorite trope in a romance, period, across the board. That is just, I love it. So I highly recommend this one as well. Moving on. Number four, The Remains of the Day by Kash Kazuo Ishiguro. I can never say his name right and it, it pains me. Now, this is a novel that I remember absolutely loving when I read it, and the irony is I've actually only read this novel one time, and I've been mean, 
I've been meaning to reread it for the past several years, but I read it back in high school, my senior year of high school, and I will never forget how much I absolutely just fell in love with the story, the way it was written, the writing, the pacing, just everything. By the time I was done with the novel, I just knew that it had solidified its place in my heart as one of my favorite novels of all time. And it has been my heart's desire to reread it for the past several years because I want to see if I still get that same overwhelming feeling of just perfection and satisfaction once the last page is flipped but I do remember we, I read it in my English class my senior year of high school because we were gonna watch the film which we did watch which was interesting but it just tells the story of this long suffering British butler I can't remember even exactly what year but it was definitely back in the day and it was uh, the way it was told the things he went through how he handled the household the various things going on in the household and in his life just the relationships in the novel just oh my goodness it's so good if you have not read this classic I highly recommend it and I want to read more books by Kazuo Ishiguro because I believe this was his first novel if I'm not mistaken I want to say it was I might be wrong there but I know he's written you know more and you know he's a very talented writer and very very highly acclaimed so definitely go check this novel out if you haven't read it already i recommend it to every single person i feel like this is a novel that will be universally liked across the board number five is for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough by Nochake Sheng, I want to say, and I believe she just died recently, so rest in peace to her. But this is one of my favorite, favorite pieces of literature of all time. It is excellent in the way that it's written. It is a choreo poem and it features five female protagonists. They're each a different color and it's a very, very popular choreo poem slash play. It has been put on countless of times been on Broadway, off-Broadway. It's received so much critical acclaim. I had the honor of being a part of a production when I was in school. I've done monologues from this piece. It is just so brilliant and it really captures the pain, the suffering, the adversity, the perseverance, the determination of black women in America, of American black women and those specifically who are the descendants of American chattel slavery. Each story for each color, um, you know, there's like orange and blue and red. Each story is so profound and meaningful. Um, as a black woman, you can really resonate with each piece, even if you don't share the same history as these women or don't necessarily have the same things in common in terms of life experience, background. There's still such a level of relatability across the board that as a black woman, you just feel and that just resonates with you so deeply. The pain and the... I, just, I can't even explain it, but it definitely is an extremely powerful piece of writing and I highly recommend everyone read it and let me know, you know, how much it touches you and changes you because I don't believe that this is a piece of writing, um, a piece of literature that you can walk away from without being changed in some way. Highly recommend. Everyone should read this. Number six is a childhood favorite by one of my absolute favorite authors and that is A Ring of Endless Light by Madeline Ingle. And this is another book that is a part of the series and it's the Austin Family series. And I will never forget picking up this book in the fifth grade. My fifth grade teacher had this bookshelf in her classroom just full of books and I would always check them out. It was an honor policy. You checked it out, you read it, you brought it back. I did not bring this one back. I am so, so sorry, Miss Kanori, you're still teaching. But I remember keeping this book and I reread it countless times throughout my early adolescence into my teen years. I don't know what it was about the story that resonated with me so deeply. I don't know if I connected with the female protagonist, the storyline. And the funny thing is, I haven't read it in years and I really do want to reread it. I think I recently purchased it from Book Outlet because I want to reread it really badly and see if I still feel the same connection and deep love for it. But I believe that was just when I was beginning to fall in love with romance, right around fifth grade. You know, not too deeply in there yet, but there is like a very sweet, lighthearted, and yet to me at that time, serious romance in this novel. I believe the character is 
the female protagonist is 16 or so and I remember reading that 16 this seemed so old and mature to me at you know 10 11 years old and I believe the story has something to do with dolphins there's a lot of science just you know like any other Madeline Langle novel there's a lot of science fiction elements woven in a lot of fantasy magical realism-esque elements more towards the science fiction side woven in and I believe Meg could communicate with dolphins somehow there's something about communicating with dolphins and reading this book made me really fall in love with dolphins and you know when you're young books just influence you so much and for a while dolphins were my favorite animal after reading this book and I actually did a lot of research on dolphins after reading this book but I just remember rereading it countless times cover to cover like my favorite parts I could go to them I don't know you guys I need to go back and really reread this but just based off of my memories on this novel alone I had to add it to this list then is Scoring Wilder by R.S. Gray and R.S. Gray is an extremely prolific new adult author and I believe she was self-published when I first read this book I don't know if she still is she's she's written so many books and has been so successful that she may have been picked up by a publishing house I'm not 100% sure but anywho, Scoring Wilder was the first book I read by her and personally my favorite and this book just really reminds me of a really really good good rom-com like one of those classics that you can watch over and over you know that you watch while you were growing up and you had sleepovers with your girlfriends and now you're an adult and you still watch it when you're having a self-care weekend in eating popcorn in your bed just loving it but scoring wilder basically takes place with this little guy but let me just read the synopsis for scoring wilder for you guys really fast what started out as a joke, Seduce Coach Wilder soon became a goal she had to score. With Olympic tryouts on the horizon, the last thing 19-year-old Kinsley Bryant needs to add to her plate, oh, no, <laughs> is Liam Wilder. He's a professional soccer player, America's favorite bad boy, and has all the qualities of a skilled panty dropper. I hate that word, panty. Blech. A face that makes girls weep, check abs that can shred parmesan cheese, the expensive kind, check. Enough confidence to shift the Earth's gravitational pull, double check. Not to mention, Liam is strictly off limits. Okay, okay, goodbye. <laughs> Filming with this one is tough. Forbidden. Her coaches have made that perfectly clear, i.e. score with Coach Wilder anywhere other than the field and you'll be cut from the team faster than you can count his tattoos, but that just makes him all the more enticing. Besides, Kinsley's already counted the visible, <laughs> I can't talk, Kinsley's, Kinsley's already counted the visible ones and she is not one to leave a project unfinished. Kinsley, look at what you did. I'm trying to film a video. I'm trying. Kinsley tries to play the game her way as they navigate through forbidden territory, but Liam... This is my life now. But Liam is determined to teach her her whole new definition for the term team bonding. <sighs> Lord, he's trash. Okay, no, you're cute. I love you. Stop biting my toes though. Anyways, so as you can guess, this is a new adult romance. It's <sighs> rereadable. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes when you read a new adult romance, you love it in the moment and then you go reread it and you're like, what was I thinking? This story is terrible. It's so cheesy. No, this story is freaking hilarious. And the scenarios, it's kind of like perfect will f wish fulfillment. It's like when you're reading it, you're like, this is exactly what I've always wanted to happen to me if I was an extremely talented, Caucasian, beautiful, tall, svelte soccer player. Yeah, sounds about right. Number eight is a really great coming of age story that to me kind of straddles the line between young adult and new adult. And it is called Emerge by S.E. Hall. And I remember reading Emerge some years back. It's been quite some time now. I want to see at, le at least four to five years ago, maybe even more. And it is the first book in a series. And in my personal opinion, it is the best one out of the lot. The rest of the series gets to me very cringy and 
like syrupy, sweet, and corny, and cheesy, and just, it's just a mess. But Emerge is the best one, which is why I have it on this list. And Emerge is definitely rereadable. I have reread it three to four times now, and now just talking about it actually makes me want to go reread it again. But it is this beautiful coming of age story about this girl who has kind of grown up in this bubble in this small town. She ends up falling in love with her best friend who you guys know me, I love that friends to lovers romance and it's so sweet and holds so much promise but unfortunately they end up going to different schools and things kind of start to unravel from there. It kind of follows her on this journey of self-discovery and growth as she meets new people and starts to explore, especially her sexuality and just venture out into new, a new romantic relationship and not how, how that causes her a lot of guilt and a lot of tension because she did kind of fall in love with this, you know, homegrown, back home boy type of thing situation her best friend growing up so she has a lot of guilt and there is a lot of tension with that storyline but it's not the type of love triangle that makes you just want to kill yourself you know those love triangles that you're just like why is this even here this love triangle actually makes sense and is very relatable and believable and is something that would definitely happen and has probably happened a ton of times but you just really enjoy watching her on her journey of self-discovery and growth on her freshman year of college and just leaving the lot and the can't talk leaving the nest stretching her wings finding herself finding real love and knowing you know learning that there's different types of love it's a very enjoyable read and it's also another one that incorporates a lot of wish fulfillment especially if you spent your freshman year homesick holed up in your dorm room and barely exploring new york city that you had just moved to no just me oh okay <laughs> number nine is 180 seconds by jessica park now Jessica Park kind of found a lot of acclaim with her very first novel which was called Flat Out Love I think and I read that back when it first came out in the I want to say it was like 2014, 13, I don't know it was a long time ago and I remember really enjoying it but 180 seconds to me blew that book way out of the water as it should be as she wrote that you know years later but 180 seconds takes this glorious idea of a social experiment and really fleshes out into a beautiful story and it's basically about this guy who's doing this experiment about you know if you stare into someone's eyes for 180 seconds a stranger you can really fall in love in a way with them and the way that it unfolds in this novel is so good you guys I just remember reading this and just being so just so captured like I did not move I think I read it in one sitting in one position I don't think I even barely breathed throughout my reading experience of this novel it was just so beautiful the way it played out and the way everything came together I think Jessica Park did an amazing job with this plot the character development weaving such a deeper meaning into the story it's not just your typical fluffy new adult romance it's so much deeper than that and holds so many serious lessons and just really meaningful messages highly recommend number 10 is a physical book <laughs> i'm so excited to not have to render this into the video this is a scar or excuse me the scarlet letter by nathaniel hawthorne i remember reading this my sophomore year of high school and being shocked by how much i enjoyed it um it's one of those books that when you read it really enrages you to your core because um patriarchy and white supremacy but at the same time it's just so captivating i mean the tea the drama the misogyny <laughs> what hester Prynne goes through in this novel truly just breaks your heart and makes you realize how far we really have come but at the same time a lot of it is still relatable unfortunately and how far we still have to go but yeah hester Prynne goes through some shit okay she turns up pregnant out of wedlock and her little community just loses their shit they do not know what to do but they brand her with the scarlet letter make her an outcast and then try to figure out who the baby daddy is and when i tell you the hypocrisy as that mystery is unfolded will not surprise you i'm not even saying it's gonna blow your mind because it will not surprise you at all but it is a great classic the pacing is wonderful the writing is great 
it really makes you think. Um, for those who enjoy actually critically thinking when they read, this is for you. No shade to those that don't. We all read for different reasons. But this is one of those classics that I actually think is worth putting in the effort. Next up, I have This Song Will Save Your Life by Leela Sales. And honestly, I remember picking up this novel because everyone was raving about it a couple years back. And I just remember thinking, you know when you you see the title of a book, you see a book, and you just know in your soul that you're gonna love it. That's how I always felt about this book because A, it has one of the best titles of a book I have literally ever read in my life. This song will save your life. Tell me that that is not just, uh, this screams modern YA classic. It does to me. And I just remember that this book actually saved my life because once upon a time, not in the not too distant past, I worked at a call center and it was a mind-numbingly mundane job. And I remember this book got me through, okay? I read it in one sitting on one of the most boring days at the call center. And I just remember really hating life when I worked there. I worked with great people, but it was just, that job was just so, we won't talk about it. And I remember one day at work, opening up this book and just escaping into this world and just completely falling in love with the characters and the story and the message and when I flipped the last page I kid you not you guys I actually was crying yes at work at the call center I was crying luckily I was in the corner and no one could really see me but this book really means a lot to me I think it has a lot to do with when I read it in my life where I read it and also the book itself if you have not picked it up yet highly recommend I really do think it's gonna become a young adult classic a modern classic I just I can't say enough good things so good so good also this book gives me the vibes of you know back in you know the heyday of indie films like indie quirky films like 500 days of summer it just screams a book that Michael Sarah and Ellen Page would have starred in it gives me those vibes like the good in indie movies from like about half a decade ago. Love it. And last but not least, number 12 is this gem of a book and this is Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. And I didn't have any expectations going into this book, but I fell in love with it so deeply when I read it a couple years back. And I was so glad that I picked it up on a whim. It was one of those books that I ended up pre-ordering, I think, off of Amazon. And then I loved it so much more than I ever thought that I would. And it just gave me such a unique perspective into the survivors of Hurricane Katrina. Our main character's family has never recovered from Hurricane Katrina. They were 100% displaced. They were destroyed. They took such a hit in terms of finances that it completely knocked them down a socioeconomic status and they just were never able to recover. So that really opened my eyes and was really interesting. But our main character basically, you know, she lives in a trailer park. It's her dad and her sister and her. Her sister ends up getting pregnant and she kind of get the sense that she kind of takes on the role of the adult in her family, the responsible one. She feels the burden of how am I gonna support everybody. You know, she doesn't think that her life is really gonna go anywhere. She doesn't feel like there are really any prospects for her after high school. She knows she can't afford college and she's scared that she's just gonna get stuck in her small town working a dead end job for the rest of her life, which are very real concerns for her based on the reality of where she's at and what she's been through and what she is still surviving. But as you guessed it, her name is Ramona and Ramona Blue because she has bright blue hair and she is extremely tall. I think she's like six feet tall. And something good finally happens in her life when her childhood friend Freddie moves back to town and he's this amazing swimmer and they just reconnect. And it's interesting because sexual identity plays a huge part in this novel. Ramona has always seen herself as a lesbian. She proudly came out of the closet. She is one of those like girls just walking around like, yes, I'm a lesbian, I'm proud, I like girls, this is who I am, this is what I do. And so much of her identity is taken up by her sexual orientation. And when Freddie comes back in her life and they start to reconnect and just kind of bond, she starts to have romantic feelings for him and that completely throws her for a loop and is just unexpected and completely takes a hit at her identity and starts to make her question everything that she knows about herself and just causes her to kind of go into a tailspin of confusion 
but the way that it resolves itself is so beautiful and well fleshed out well thought out and Julie Murphy does a great job of really creating these characters that are memorable that will make you root for them and grow to love them and really want you really make you want them to succeed in life and to find their place but yes highly recommend Ramona Blue if you didn't hear about it or maybe you did and you didn't pick it up this is a good one and that is it for this video it's gonna take me hopefully not too long to edit I do want to get it up for you guys ASAP so yes I will catch you guys in my next video Mwah. bye because there are white booktubers that no, don't necessarily have the numbers in the sense that they're not huge and they're still being given opportunities and they're given opportunity to grow right that's the whole point that is an excuse I